Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, Bible lesson and a uh, little bit of a devotion broadcast on the subject of the Apostles' Prayer. Hey, and uh, with that in mind, uh, one of the uh, uh, comments that was on one of these earlier broadcasts of the uh, Praying as the Apostles did, someone uh, left a comment. I didn't take it negatively by any means, but uh, he uh, made a comment and said, I wonder if any of the Apostles had a rifle hanging on a rack in his den. <laughs> and So a couple of things about this. This isn't a rifle. This is a shotgun. It was actually my mom's when she was a kid. It no longer functions. It's just a decoration now. Uh, years ago, I took it to a to a, uh, a gunsmith and had him look at it. I was going to see if he could get it back operational, <laughs> and uh, and he said, "No." Nah. He, in fact, the firing pin. He took the firing pin out and says, "I wouldn't shoot this if I were you." Then um, the elk rack that it's hanging on. That was a, an elk that uh, my father-in-law uh, shot while my wife was in college. He shot it in Eastern Oregon. She was going to school in Corvallis, Oregon. He drove it, put it in the back of his pickup, drove all the way from Eastern Oregon uh, to Corvallis, about a what, five, six hour drive in the middle of the night, uh, got all the girls in and he did sorority up so that they could come outside and see this big animal that he had shot. And uh, anyway, and so we have uh, hit that elk rack and I put the gun on it just for the look. And as for the den, this is actually just a, a part of the garage that uh, we set up kind of as a man cave in here. And it's a kind of a blessing to have this little bit of room. All right, so let me give to you, um, uh, I'll read a passage of scripture to you. This is in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. I'm gonna start reading in verse 20. And remember, we're going through some of the ways that the apostles would have prayed, all right? The things that they prayed for, uh, for other believers. And we're taking that as a kind of as a lesson. We're gonna learn how to pray one for another uh, by learning how to pray, learning how the apostles prayed one for another. So here's the passage. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And I know somebody said, well, that's not really a prayer. That's a doxology. That's kind of an announcement or a pronouncement. And he is pronouncing a blessing on others. I just want to suggest to you that anytime we say to someone, you know, the Lord bless you, uh, that is a prayer. We're asking God to bless them. And I think that's exactly what's happening in this passage of Scripture, that the Apostle Paul, who I am convinced is the writer of the book of Hebrews, is saying, this is what I want to pray for you about. So let's go back through the list, and I've been giving you, the, showing you this little thing. We uh, put this together. It's actually a study that I did at church, and then I turned it into a book called Teach Us to Pray. And then I put this little outline together, and I put it on the back of our prayer list. So um, our week Wednesday night weekly prayer list, uh, the back of that has this, and it's meant to help us to learn to pray one for another. Not just, you know, we want to pray for each other um, our needs and wants and desires and burdens, and we should do that. Uh, but but also we should, when we pray one for another, we ought to, I think, learn to pray uh, as the apostles did for one another. And so uh, in the book of Romans, I gave each one of these books, uh, the different epistles that have prayers in them, I gave them different themes. In the book of Romans, the theme is salvation. And uh, he prays and said, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel was that they might be saved. Let me just suggest that the way to see a nation saved, uh, turn to God, is to see the people in that nation turn to God. Pray for souls to be saved so that our nation would be turned around, turned to God. Set first and second Corinthians, the theme of prayer is separation, that the saints would keep themselves from evil. And by distancing themselves from, um, from those who cause division within the church, it creates unity in uh, in the local church. And then in the book of Ephesians, the theme of prayer is the spirit of wisdom that the people of God would have the light of understanding. Um, how do I have it written down here? The light shined in the recesses of the mind to understand what is the hope of his calling, the riches of his glory, riches of the glory of his inheritance and the exceeding greatness of his power, God's power. Uh, boy, this is a day today we really need to see 
God at work. Isn't that true? We need to see God's power at work, uh, not only in the United States, but around the world. In the book of Philippians, the theme is uh, is genuine sincerity among the saints, that our love would, uh, uh, would abound more and more, and that we would approve things that are excellent, and that we would be sincere and without offense until the day of, uh, of Jesus Christ. And the book of Colossians, the theme of prayer, is that we would be strengthened with all might, that we'd be filled with the knowledge of his will. And when we know God's will, when we're confident that, that we're in the will of God, that we're, that we're walking in and living in the will of God, what that'll do for us is that'll give us, um, uh, what that'll do for us is it'll, it'll give us strength to live for God, uh, strength of character, walking worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. In First and Second Thessalonians, the theme of prayer is that the believers would be sanctified, uh, holy, set apart unto God, spirit, soul, and body. Not just nominal Christians, not just, you know, weekend Christians, but that every day, all day, in our spirit, in our soul, and in our body, in every aspect of our life, we're going to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. In First and Second Timothy, the theme of prayer is to see uh, the brethren in fellowship at church. And boy, we need to see that. Pray, pray that God would, um, would, would restore uh, the opportunity for us to be together in a local uh, church body once again. And, um, and then in the book of Hebrews, this passage we read, the theme of prayer is the service of the saints. And not just that we would serve, and by the way, we ought to be serving. We ought to be servants of the Lord Jesus Christ and servants in his uh, house, which is the local church. We ought to do that. But um, he, he has some specific things he's praying in this passage of Scripture. Number one, that we as believers, that we would be made perfect. That, uh, and the word perfect there has to do with completeness, not, you know, that we're sinless, but that we're complete, that our, that our service to the Lord is the kind of service that, that is um, that, that accomplishes its purpose. And then uh, to do his will, made perfect to do his will. And that again goes back, this has come up repeatedly in here, that we would know his will and that we would do his, understand his will and that we would do his will, that we would accomplish it. And then uh, he has this very specific thing, God working in you. And so that service, in order to have complete service, and in order to do the will of God, it's not just us, you know, me figuring out what is the will of God, and I am blessed God, I'm going to do it with all my heart and soul of mine. It's not that. It is I surrender um, all of me to God so that God can do his work in me in serving others. All right? So that's the, uh, uh, the Bible study for this afternoon. God bless you, and we'll talk to you later.